Possum is a movie that I entered into not really knowing what to expect. I searched for movies that were similar to Midsommar and this 2018 feature that wasn't that well known popped up and I thought, why not? Well it turned out there were actually several reasons as to why not. But the main one was that it was a movie that messes with your head in multiple different ways. It played on fears that we all have from when we were younger about things lurking in the dark and it had twists that took dark turns and shone a light on trauma which made us question what we were actually watching. So with this one hitting differently, I thought I'd break down and explain what it was about and why it was so powerful. So let's get into it. Here is why Possum is the most disturbing movie ever made. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The overall plot of this movie was that there was a man named Philip who had returned to his family home which was burned down many years ago and upon his return a local boy in the area went missing, a boy called Michael. Michael was last seen on the day that Philip was on the train going back to his family home, making him a prime suspect in the investigation. Weirs the audience didn't know if it was him that carried out the crime, but we were led to believe that it was especially due to the suspicious behaviours that he emitted and the fact that the time wasn't necessarily structured. We'd cut between time quite a lot. Philip carried a bag around with him where inside there was a puppet that he was constantly trying to get rid of and no matter how hard he tried, he never could. The puppet was the most haunting thing that you would most likely ever lay eyes on. It had several legs, almost like a spider, and it had the torso and head of a human that looked as though they were deceased. The head had no hair and the face was extremely pale and white with dark eyes. We rarely ever saw it, but when we did, it was utterly petrifying. It would be slowly crawling out of the bag or creeping around the corner in the dark. Philip was obsessed with it and he couldn't get rid of it no matter how hard he tried. As the movie unfolded, we saw that Maurice lived in the house that Philip was at and that he was somebody who was living there despite not owning the house. Philip owned the house and he made that clear from the moment that he entered, as if he was almost asserting his authority, despite his body language saying otherwise. Throughout this movie, Philip was terrified of going inside one of the rooms in the house and Morris would often ask if he was going to go in and he wouldn't go in at all. This was where we saw the main reveal at the end of the episode. Prior to the ending, we saw Philip basically spending most of his time wandering around his old neighborhood, trying to get rid of the puppet despite the hold that it had on him. He would visit his old school, have dark thoughts and flashbacks, and avoid the police as he was a suspect of the investigation of the missing boy Michael. At the end, Philip entered the room after looking at a photo of his mother and father and hallucinating, seeing his puppet going after him. He entered and we saw that it was the room of his mother and father who likely perished in the fire. Out of the dark, we saw that Morris came out and grabbed a hold of Philip and it was then revealed to us that Morris was the person who was responsible for a young boy going missing many years ago when the fire occurred. It was also revealed to us that Morris abused Philip when he was younger and that he took the person who went missing at the start of the movie, Michael. In a moment of rage, we saw Philip turn around and kill Morris after taking control and then he opened up a box that was inside of the room and we saw that Michael emerged and ran away. Then the movie finished with a close-up of Philip sitting in his back garden. There were so many questions that you were left with at the end of the movie. Like, quite literally, did what I just watched actually happen? Personally, I don't think it actually did. Whilst on the surface level, we were led to believe that Morris was behind the taking of Michael, I don't think he was. I think Morris was a hallucination and something that Philip was seeing. I think Philip was behind the taking of Michael and the conversations were all inside of his head. The poem Possum was used as a haunting narration throughout the entirety of the movie and it often spoke about what was inside of the bag, but also a somewhat reflection on the traumatic experience that Philip suffered through the hands of his uncle. The puppet was a visual representation of Philip trying to let go of his past, but it showed us how the trauma that he endured was still present within his everyday life and no matter how hard that he tried to bury it, burn it or sink it, it still laid beside him always present and at the core of the very person that he was in the present day. When Morris came out of the darkness, I was shocked to see that happen and it quite literally gave me the largest jump scare that I've experienced in a long while. Accompanied with the score and the volume increasing, I did quite literally jump out of my skin. When Philip killed Morris, I believe he was acting out what he wished that he had have done to his uncle all of those years ago. I don't believe that a man that was most probably in his 70s with the frame and stature of Morris would be able to overpower Philip, so it was all happening inside of his mind. 
The fact that moments before this scene occurred, we saw Philip walking over to his puppet and almost allowing it to take over him. I believe it was Philip facing his past head on for the first time in his life. The fact that he saw the head of the puppet as himself when it appeared in his shirt when he looked in the mirror, it showed that it had a hold of him and he felt like he was his past. I also think the fact that he had the bag put over him by Morris showed that it was the case too. At the end of the movie, everything made sense that we saw earlier on, such as why he was obsessed with the school and felt as though he wanted to see his tutor and also go to the police with them. I imagine when he was younger, he may have told his teacher about his uncle, and then they said that they were going to go to the police together, but maybe they didn't. So maybe in his mind, he thought that he could do the same in the present day. Many things about this movie make you feel so uncomfortable. The uncomfortable nature of the character performance of Philip, accompanied by the close-up shots, the tight buttoned-up shirt, the sweat that he had on him a lot of the time, and even the tone of voice and lack of certainty in everything that he was saying. Philip was a walking, blank expression, but it said so much. The derelict house that still resembled the night that the fire broke out, providing a dirty, unsettling environment, was the perfect place for this movie to be set and added to the constant uncomfortable environment. The performance of Morris and not truly knowing who he was, why he was there, if he was real or not, and then the reveal of him being an evil individual was harrowing to witness. The poem being used as a repeat motif throughout the movie as we were transitioning throughout the days and seeing Philip try to hide his past but also face it head on was a great way of supporting the storytelling and planting audible seeds of fear throughout. There was silence throughout a lot of the movie, and silence can often be far more damaging than what noise is. It's like darkness. You never know what's there or what's coming. And then finally, the puppet's design itself. It was quite literally the thing that nightmares are made of. The movement, blank face that would stand out in the dark, and the body that it had was enough to linger in your mind long after the runtime. This is a horror movie done in the right way, with attention to detail, a thought-provoking story that leaves you questioning what's just been watched, and it's carried by two people. Two people that deliver their roles perfectly. Possum is black as sin, and as much as I want to watch it again, I don't think I can. Not just yet, anyway. So, there you have it. Why Possum is the most disturbing movie ever made. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, theories and predictions, and character breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show on movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show on movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this movie? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.